In this video, I'm gonna show you how I turn my vocals into this. What's up you guys, it's Nathan Larson here, back at you with another video for those of you guys who make music at home. Whether you're an artist, songwriter, producer, if you write and record your own music at home, this is the channel for you. And here's the deal, if that sounds anything like you at all, you need to subscribe to the channel. It's there, that'd be awesome. And in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how you can turn actually literally anything into an instrument that you can literally play on your keyboard like that. Let's do it. Okay, so what I showed you in the little preview is this. Okay, but what we wanna specifically listen to is this. Boom, so we're gonna replicate that, <laughs> which is kind of funny because I used a plugin called Replica. So the very first thing that we have to do is actually get source. And so what this means is that I have to basically record actual audio of what it is that I want to then control with my keyboard. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and create an audio track here. So we've got this audio track here. We're gonna call this vocal sample. And then we could probably just go in and sample, uh, solo this out. We just can arbitrarily pick a pitch that we want because the sampler is going to actually identify the pitch that we're gonna use and make modifications and stuff based on that and it will map it out to the keyboard. And I'll show you how to do that here in a second. So what we're gonna do very first thing first is actually come up with some sort of source that we wanna create. Now, the style of this is definitely a little bit more breathy. I want it to be a little more airy. I'm gonna use this like a pad. So this is what this would actually sound like if I take out this little vocal pad that I created created here. So I already have some gang vocals going on here that's in this little track stack right there, but we wanna add a little bit more depth, something a little bit more brightness, airiness. So what I wanna do is basically record vocals in such a way that's gonna have a little bit of airiness and breathiness to it. So I'm actually gonna sing it like, ha, just like that with a little bit of an H, ha. Okay, and we're gonna do one whole bar of this. Now, you could do it as long or as short as you want. Based on that performance is how your sampler is going to take it. So if you only do a vocal part that's like two beats long, then when you play it on your keyboard, it's only gonna hold it out for two beats unless you were to do some manipulation in the actual sampler itself. I think it's just easier to pretty much get it how I want it to be. So let's go ahead and record something. Let's just go ahead and flatten that. And let's go ahead and open up this audio here. Let's just get it right on the bar there. Not that it matters too much. And we're gonna go and just cut it right there. And we'll just add a little fade. Well, let's go ahead and do that. Sure, why not? And then the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and fix the pitch, just make sure everything's perfectly in pitch. And then I'm gonna take the vibrato down a little bit because I don't want this to have a lot of vibrato. The next thing I wanna do is start just kind of making sure this sounds okay. So we're gonna go ahead and just roll off everything below like 100. We're gonna go ahead and take a little bit out on the 200 to 250 range maybe. Which, you know, that's pretty much fine right there. And then all I'm gonna do here is just compress it a little bit. I'll just go ahead and use a Logic compressor. Uh, I really like their VCDA. Okay, now what we're gonna do is create a software instrument. Now, if you're using Logic Pro, I recommend just using the Quick Sampler. If you have Contact, you can use the Contact Player. You can actually even use Alchemy. I'm just gonna use the Quick Sampler. Basically, any sampler is gonna be able to do this. Doesn't matter what you use. And then we're gonna grab this, drop it in, and now... There we go. And now we can play this on our keyboard. Now, of course, as it stands right now... I mean, that's kind of cool, right? <laughs> but we've done absolutely nothing to this. Now, so there's some other things you could do in here. You know, we could go in here and we could start adjusting, uh, you know, pitch. We could add a filter. Um, we could add, adjust the ADSR on here as well. But I'm really not too worried about that because what I want to do is actually start shaping this sound with plugins to go ahead and start making this my own. So the very first thing I'm going to do is probably go in here and add some reverb. And so let's go ahead and add some reverb. It doesn't really matter too much what I really, really like this east-west quantum Quantum Leap Spaces. Boom. 
boom. The next thing I might do is add a delay. So we're gonna use replica. And I really love the diffusion mode on here. Ah, sounds so good. That's tasty. The next thing I'm gonna do is add fresh air. Fresh air, I just gotta say, I've been super impressed with it. It can add a little bit of a buzziness to it. That's okay. So then what we wanna do is basically come up with what we exactly want this to sound like. So I want it to basically function like a pad, right? So we're gonna do something like. So what I'm gonna do here is do one pan to the left, and then we're gonna do another one pan to the right. And I'm gonna do different voicings for each. That way this kind of gives a little bit of a wider vibe to it. So on the right hand. So we'll quantize that, it's the exact same. Command R to duplicate that. And then we're gonna do a higher voicing for the next one. All right, so let's quantize that. So obviously you can tell, kind of starts sounding as we get higher. It's gonna start sounding a little weird. Sounds pretty weird. <laughs> but still really cool. So the next thing that I'm gonna do here to really take this up a notch is I'm going to side chain this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a compressor on here. And again, it really doesn't matter too much as any compressor that can side chain. Uh, you can use third party stuff just to keep it really simple for you guys. I'm just gonna go ahead, use a logic one. Um, so first thing we wanna do is you would want to create some sort of a kick or something like that that's actually going to trigger the side chain. So let's just go ahead and assume this doesn't exist. I already created one, but here we have this cajon bass. Okay, so let's just duplicate that, okay? And let's call this cajon side chain. What, so what we're gonna wanna do is then basically use that as the source. So we're gonna go back to our compressor in here, open that up, go up to side chain, instrument, and then we're gonna find that cajon side chain. Okay, and I'm gonna turn the ratio up a little bit to like four to one, and we can mess around with this a little bit. And let's just go ahead and move this up here just so you can see everything that we're doing. Now, you can mute this, it really doesn't matter, but what ends up happening is, every time that hits, it's going to then actually cause the compression to kick in on that instrument. And so what we're gonna do is go ahead and record what, we, what it is we want. And let's just solo this out so you can really hear it. Okay, so let's quantize that. Now the cool thing about side chaining is we can now actually mute that. It will still do its job. So let's open up this compressor and we can adjust the threshold, which I don't think we're gonna do, but I do wanna change the release time to be slower. So that's gonna slow down how long it takes for that compressor to ease up. Boom, there we go. And what we're gonna wanna do is then copy that compression into the other one. So now we're gonna have this. And in the whole thing, And 
real quick, I do want to let you guys know that I do have a module from the Producer Accelerator. That's my course for free for you guys to check out. It's a free session breakdown of one of my own tracks, I Will Rise. That link is down below. It will only be available until January 27th, 2021, when the course goes live. If you like this video, I would invite you to subscribe to the channel, comment down below, give the video a like for the YouTube algorithm, and we will see you in the next one.